Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to another uh, Chicago Beer Pass beer review. This time we're not going too deep in the cellar. Nick and I have some coffee dino s'mores. Man, um, there's dino s'mores. Yes. Which is modeled after the snacks at the at the off-color launch party. Yeah, I don't know if you remember Black that. Beetle. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, not Black Beetle. Um, fuck, it's the rugby bar. Black Rock. Black Rock. Black, Black Rock. Um, I'll set the scene for you. Um, <laughs> there was an episode of the Hotcast being filmed that day, and the Hotcast was announcing that uh, in Geneva that Tom Quarter was leaving to go start Penrose. Yeah, right? we recorded at uh, Hop Leaf that day, and yeah. then we're coming over to the Black Rock for this party. Yeah, so this is like part two of a two-day party for Off Colors launch at Black Rock with like a ridiculous lineup of uh, Off Colors stuff. Oh, but they have um, from Courtney Baldy, who was at the time Revolution's pastry chef. Yeah. Uh, she had like some uh, some graham crackers and then she had some marshmallows shaped like dinos, dinosaurs. And I believe this beer was inspired by that. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this then this is the coffee variant of it. They've now done a few variants of it, barrel-aged versions of it. Um, and everything, and it comes in this adorable little two pack. Man, it is quite lovely, Brad. Look at that. This is like, <laughs> uh, I would say 90% of the reason I picked this up Dude, was for the little the I package. I never get excited about packaging, right? Like yeah. the holders, but come on. Like, I, I that, the beer good. is going to be good and like it's nice to try it, but a little two pack, <laughs> come on. It, that is it's um, so awesome. That's good fun. So yeah, man. Um, so this is an Imperial Coffee Marshmallow Stout, ten point five percent. So yeah, pretty uh, pretty big one here. Yeah, the mad scientist John Lackler got some <laughs> love, love for Belgians and, and French styles and and styles that are obscure. Yeah. And then um, you know he ran you know he ran the barrel program at Goose Island, so he knows his way around stouts. Mm hmm. And maybe he loves marshmallows too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And then there's that. Mm hmm. Uh, so I did not make it to the recent release party for this beer. So is this, is this the most recent one? Yeah, this is the most recent one. Um, I wasn't seeing a date code on here. They have a, a little code on here, but I don't know if that's a date code or not. But it's fairly new, at least within the last four months or six months. But yeah, Roma, I'm getting that... Coffee falls out pretty quickly, even no matter how much Goose will tell you, it stays in there for a while. According to Goose, it'll stay there for that's so a, long, bro. That's a, that's a lie. <laughs> I'm not getting coffee, but I'm getting, like, you know, Tootsie Roll and, like, cotton candy and, you know, like, those those types of vibes. Yeah. You know? And it feels warm. It feels boozy. Like, it feels, I feel a little heat. Oh, like, even even just getting your nose in yeah. it. Yeah. You're like, you feel, you feel like this is going to be. It's packing a punch. Mm -hmm. And it could be I was drinking a lot of coffee earlier, so. <laughs> we were at uppers and downers. I'm telling Brad, I'm like, yeah, you know, I might have a cup in the morning. I might have a cup at night. Brad's like, dude, I drink, I drink coffee. I drink coffee all day. I'll probably, day. I'll drink some coffee after we're done <laughs> drinking this. That's how I roll. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's a, it's really sweet that, like, um, the stickiness is there from the marshmallow, I think. That's what I, I'm getting from that a little bit. Oh, I'm digging that. It's nice too, man, because it's um, I don't know how do you. It's like a light, airy flavor, mm -hmm. you know. And then it's actually surprisingly kind of um, not dense, right? Like it's no, it's, it doesn't feel like a thick, heavy it's, stout. It's lighter than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. It's not like that cultured mouth Russian imperial stout. It is not mm -hmm. that, but it is sticky. Yes. It has that stickiness to it, but marshmallows are very light. Uh, you, know, you could eat like a whole bag of marshmallows and never feel like you ate anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like, um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like the beers that just kind of like are a dessert in your mouth, the pastry styles, I love those, but I do like a beer that kind of can take you on a pastry ride and then finish yeah. with the integrity of a beer like we were talking about with, um, you know, last week when we had um, the sketchbook on. Yeah. We're like, yeah, this is a hazy IPA, but it's not it's not hazy and crazy like 
mimosa or like you know mm-hmm. some sort of concoct not a cocktail yeah of a beer this it's still a beer it's a beer first mm-hmm. and i think that's i'm getting a lot of that here this is a beer first that takes you on a pastry ride yeah but kind of finishes like a like a stout would finish yeah there was a what the article uh around phobab time about like pastry stouts being a thing and this one kind of focuses more on the beer that has the pastry yeah. flavor so it's not we know you like sweet beers. Let's throw a bunch of crap into our stout and call it a blueberry pancake stout. It's. So. <laughs> I mean, even at um, even at Stout Fest, like I think we're at an all time high of people using like fruits, like just uh-huh. adjuncts. Period. Yeah. But mainly like fruits and like spices in their beer. I don't think we've seen it ever before like this. Yeah. Right. So. But uh, I'm not getting a ton of coffee from this. Maybe. No. Uh, the, maybe the bitterness of the coffee is there a little bit, but not uh, actual coffee flavor. When I, the first time I fell in love with a coffee beer was um, Bourbon County Stout with uh, the Black Cat Espresso the first year, so mm. 2010. Yeah. And there was a very distinct, you know, fresh ground coffee aroma with that beer that excited me, right? Yeah. And then when you sat on it, the long you sat on it, it had that turn into that candy tootsie roll thing. Yeah. But nowadays, even with like Hopewell's Imperial Stout and even with this, it sounds like it feels like the coffee's being used to, to your point, like enhance the bittering finish more so than be like a coffee element on its own that pops out at you. Yeah, it just kind of complements whatever is in the beer already. Mm-hmm. It just kind of in this case, I think it, it really kind of it kind of counter. It's a counterpoint to the the dessert side of the beer. Okay. You know, I see that. So. Well, cool. So if you can get your hands on this cute little two-pack, <laughs> if it's still around, it's probably not anymore. Definitely try to pick some up. But be sure, if you're in Chicago, head over to uh, the Mouse Trap. Uh, they always are putting new things on. Sometimes I bet they may have a variant of this yeah. um, on at some point, a special release, a tapping. They do things like that. Yeah. I'm a fan of those guys, man. They make everything from like a 3.5% stout to like you know like some of these beers with these mm. obscure styles and then you know they bring it all back home with like a big a, a big coffee stout too so mm-hmm. with a little mouse on it <laughs> <laughs> oh awesome well we'll uh keep sipping on these yeah pick some up if you can pick up some other off color if you get a chance um always enjoy what those guys are doing so cheers cheers <laughs>